when I go to a restaurant, yeah, I'm definitely a little bit more interested in the menu than maybe the person I'm dining with is. There are about 400 boxes, approximately, and they're organized chronologically. So here we have, you know, October 1905, November 1905, January 1906, and it just goes on and wraps around. We have automat menus, we have historical presidential menus, we have New York City silk merchant menus, bankers association menus, we have menus with seating charts. I think menus appeal to everyone. Um, it, the graphics, the content, um, the history of the restaurant. It's interesting to look at prohibition menus, menus from World War I, Save the Wheat, Save the Meat, Meatless Tuesdays, Wheatless Wednesdays. I would love to get periodic updates of the menus um, because it really depends on the season. I'd love to see how they're cooking ramps, when they started cooking ramps. I'm not going to reject any menu and I actually used to have a thing against takeout menus and I don't want a ton of takeout menus but you know especially in New York where everybody orders takeout all the time it really gives you a sense of sort of time and place. Yes, I have been known to steal some menus from restaurants. Um, and I also write to people legitimately and ask them if they would send me their menus. I've never ever had anyone say, no, you can't have a menu. They're always really honored to be part of the New York Public Library's collection. I mean, I can sit down where the menus are kept, which is under Bryant Park, and look through old menus. That's a really nice way to spend a few hours a day, and that is part of my job, and I shouldn't feel guilty about that. I'm especially interested in how different the menus are today than they were so many years ago. Old menus have a lot of imagery. Great graphic design, especially for Easter and Thanksgiving menus and Christmas menus, they're wonderful images. I think that there tends to be a little bit more description now, especially today if the menus include farms where the vegetables come from or the you know cheese comes from I find that really fascinating and something that I think is going to be really important for future researchers but they tend to be much larger it's a blank design if you look at the menu for per se I mean I know there are obvious reasons for it but you know the the font and the way it's just a white page versus you know the menus of the mid to early part of the 20th century they seem to have a little bit more sort of humor to them The collection was started by a woman named Miss Frank E. Butolf. There's not a whole lot known about her personal life except, you know, that she collected postcards with lighthouses, that she was, you know, fluent in French and German. She wrote to the president of the library named John Shaw Billings asking him if he would be interested in, you know, having a collection of restaurant menus. Dr. Billings said, sure. I get the impression that he has no idea what he was in for and he was naively saying, sure, just to sort of maybe get her off his back. She just started collecting menus with abandon and put out advertisements in different hotel journals, um, the Hotel Monthly, the Caterer. February of 1900, which was really just a month after she started collecting it, there were about five boxes. She collected up until 1921 when she was asked to leave the library for somewhat disruptive, disorderly behavior. Her alcove was facing Bryant Park and she would yell at the children playing outside um, and call them hooligans and the mothers of the children would complain to the library and the library would then immediately know that it was her even without a name being mentioned. Ms. Butolf would say, oh no, I blow kisses to those children. Those children love me. I think as she got older, she just got sort of more and more disruptive. Um, and yet we have this amazing collection which is in amazing condition because of her work and you know because of her sort of compulsiveness we still have menus today that are in excellent condition and far better than more recent menus that we've acquired. This is the inauguration of the Statue of Liberty from October 28, 1886 and it was held at Delmonico's 
the ribbons are coming apart a little bit. This is part of the Butov collection, and you can tell, well, A, because it's from 1906, but also she put a big stamp on every menu that she collected, sometimes in numerous places, and sometimes sort of ruining the image of the menu. We would never do that now. Um, and so this is a 1906 automat menu, one of the first automat menus in New York. This is from September 3rd, 1906. This is three bills of fare from the Lusitania. It's April 26, 1908, and it's the breakfast. And you have the first class, second class, and third class menus. And so this one here is the first class menu, and it, you can see it's a much cleaner design. Then you have the second class meal, and then you have this sort of bigger third class meal with less food offerings. This is a restaurant at the Newark Airport. Um, this was one of Joe Baum's restaurants and he did Windows on the World, the Rainbow Room. I think graphically it's a nice menu. And on the bottom it says flight announcements are not made in this room. Our hostess will be pleased to check on your flight. This is from Houston, Texas. This is Ninfa's. When you see laminated menus you know you're in a certain time period. 1977. This is 1977. We have about 750 new menus. Included in that, those 750 are quite a few Concord menus. This is a 1992 menu. You get a roast filet of sea bass garnished with caviar, a salad of lobster, grapefruit, and truffles. A rough estimate is about 35,000 menus in our collection, so there are quite a number of menus I've never seen before. We get restaurateurs coming in to look at the menu collection, and we get graphic designers who are looking at the way the menus were organized. Some people just find it kind of funny to look at old menus and see what the prices were. Lately we're getting a lot of culinary historians who are looking at when certain dishes appear or start appearing on menus. Our probably most famous user was a marine biologist who was looking at the menu collection to look at certain fish populations and when fish would appear on a menu and when they would disappear from a menu and how it correlated to sort of the surrounding waters. Um, so that was a really sort of aha moment for us in terms of how people are using the collection.